So Maxwell's equations, a set of four equations that uh, uh, physicists learn about in their undergraduate studies, are four fundamental equations that describe everything that we know about electric fields and magnetic fields and ultimately leads us to the, the theory that did the, the classical theory that describes how light behaves. Um, the history towards Maxwell's equations is quite long and the equations themselves were first published in, a, in 1861. The path to, towards Maxwell's equations um, includes many scientists, many steps. Um, and we can uh, uh, break, break those down into different uh, parts. Um, many of us are familiar with the idea that if you have a, an electric charge, um, and we have a, another electric charge just here, that they're either re attracted to each other or, or repelled from each other according to the positive or negative. And in fact, this follows a, 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 this attraction or repulsion follows an inverse square law uh, similar to the law of gravitation. And this is called uh, Coulomb's law, um, was uh, discovered in 1874. And so that the, uh, that's the first equation, that's the first part of uh, the, the, the jigsaw that makes up Maxwell's equation, this idea that uh, the attraction and repulsion of charges. The next um, part of Maxwell's equations is something that we're uh, we're familiar with in terms of uh, magnets. Uh, we know that we're, uh, the magnets that we, we have and that we put on our fridges and so forth have a, a north and a south pole and if we bring the magnets together um, the fields interact and they either attract or repel each other. But one thing that, that um, always occurs is if we break up a magnet we get a, the, each piece is a north and a south pole. Um, and it, in fact, we can go on breaking them up and we can never isolate the north pole away from the south pole. And so this idea that the, there are no, as we say, magnetic monopoles, um, we haven't discovered any yet, um, is a, a, a an aspect that can be expressed mathematically in terms of uh, an aspect of the magnetic field. It means that the magnetic field lines all have to curl up into loops. And that forms the second uh, Maxwell equation, the mathematical expression that there are no magnetic monopoles. The great uh, experimentalist Michael Faraday in the experiments he performed at the Royal Institution here in London um, showed how a magnetic field can change in time. So if we take a magnet and pass it through a loop of current, then we observe a current flowing, even though there's no battery or uh, force to, to drive charges around a loop. So pushing a magnet through a loop drives a current. And he, um, uh, in a series of experiments was able to show that and the equation that describes that, the law of electromagnetic induction, um, uh, demonstrates a quantitative link between an electric field on the one hand and a dynamic magnetic field on the other. Um, and so that forms the third of Maxwell's e e equations, the law of electromagnetic induction. Ampère, a French physicist, um, uh, showed in 1861 that, um, uh, that if you take a wire, there is a magnetic field surrounding that wire. Um, and in fact, if you curl the wire, uh, the wire up in a particular way to make a sort of coil, it, it produces a magnetic field that is very similar to the field around a, a bar magnet. And he was able to uh, show the relationship between the field and the um, current, the magnetic field and the current that goes through the, um, the, the wire. And so uh, that is the uh, fourth Maxwell equation that uh, illustrates this uh, relationship between current and magnetic field. 
So that's the picture up until um, 1861. Max will put these four pieces together and he made one brilliant insight that added um, uh, the, the, made the picture complete. Faraday's law um, shows that a dynamically changing magnetic field, such as from a moving magnet, can induce an electric field. And Maxwell pondered the opposite possibility that a dynamic electric field could induce a magnetic field. It seems reasonable that they should be, that they should be the, behave in similar ways, but Maxwell had the insight to actually write it down and, and added an extra term. So Maxwell added an extra term that described this relationship between a dynamically uh, changing uh, electric field, how that could induce a, a magnetic field. And um, there were very good, um, it wasn't just a, an inspiration in, in vacuum, it, there were good, very good theoretical arguments for why this extra term should be included. But that made the jigsaw puzzle complete in the sense that uh, it, it, in 1862, when the equations were first published, um, that it made the uh, uh, four equations as we now write them um, pretty much un unchanged and, and what were still re used in research uh, today. But the most, undoubtedly the most remarkable consequence of writing down these pieces of uh, physics, the, how electric and magnetic fields behave in space and time, undoubtedly the most remarkable consequence of this um, was what Maxwell did over the next year or so, and that was to examine um, how these equations could be combined, um, in particular in free space, when there are no charges and there are no magnets, there are just fields. And what he showed was that how the electric field could influence the magnetic field, the magnetic field could influence the electric field, and the two could combine and feed off of each other, and they could wiggle and propagate and flow. In, when he wrote these equations, he said we can hardly avoid the conclusion that this oscillation of electric and magnetic fields is what we know as light. Uh, he th at the time he thought of light as travelling in some kind of medium, what we call the ether, which we su subsequently realised was unnecessary, or Einstein realised was unnecessary. But the Maxwell's insight was utterly brilliant and influences our lives today. So we have four equations, one describing uh, an electric field that comes from a charge, one that describes the fact that uh, there are no magnetic monopoles, so that tells us something about the magnetic field, and then we have two further equations, one that describes how changes in electric field produce a magnetic field, and one that uh, describes how changes in magnetic field produces change, uh, changes in the electric field. So you can write, write out the equations and combine them into a single equation then, let, let us say for the, just the electric field. And what that tells us is that the electric field oscillates. It oscillates at a particular rate and also that it travels in space at a particular speed. And when you calculate the speed of these oscillations, it corresponds exactly to the speed of light that can be measured independently. And so the four, the tapestry of jigsaw of four Maxwell's equations can be combined um, into a single uh, equation that shows that light is electromagnetic radiation. So there is, is little doubt in my view that Maxwell's synthesis of classical uh, electromagnetic field theory is one of the most brilliant syntheses in all of physics, right up there with Newton's laws of motion, uh, of equal um, power and fundamental influence. And the fact that um, 
it tells us exactly how classically how light behaves has had uh, since the, right from the, the the time that the equations were first written down has had enormous influence uh, on our lives so just think about um, how we transmit signals by radio um, how we observe things um, in the stars and astronomy um, microwave ovens all kinds of everyday objects the lights that we use to see by are uh, all basically understood in terms of the, the Maxwell's theory. Um, in, in modern research, we are looking at very interesting ideas on how to manipulate light using materials called metamaterials, for example, and that continues to be very, very active research right to this, uh, right to this day. Mm -hmm.